Uh, I think Christians live in an exciting time. It's a time that is decisive for Christian history. One can look at Christian history and see many turning points and decisive moments. And I think we're at one of those moments today. Christianity has influenced Western history, broadly speaking. And at the same time today, decisive questions are arising from the culture that Christians need to respond to. All Christians don't respond to these uh, in the same way. All Christian groups don't respond to these issues in the same way. But how Christians will respond to these issues is going to be important for uh, uncovering the future of uh, Christianity and the direction that it goes. These are important issues to me. I've tried to understand them myself, and these are decisive issues for my class as I teach students. It's been important enough to me that I recently wrote a book about it, and um, in that book I in particular focus on four decisive cultural issues that Christians and Christian Christianity must face over the coming uh, decades. Those four issues include the relationship between Christianity and other religions. We live in a multi-religious context and a multicultural context. How should Christians think about other religions? Christianity and feminism. We live in, in certain sense, a post-feminist context in which the feminist movement has changed in many ways our culture, our legal system, uh, and so how should Christians respond to feminism? Christianity and homosexuality. Uh, what should Christians think about the uh, debate in our culture about gays and gay rights? And finally, Christianity and the natural environment. How can Christians be a part of assuring that the world that we hand on to the future is one that is sustainable? So those four issues, I think, are vital for Christianity at this juncture. And they've produced creative and ingenious responses of theologians. And it's covering those responses, a range of responses, that's important for my class. All Christian theologians, when they look at these issues, they basically turn to three kinds of sources of authority to deal with them. One source is the Bible. What does the Bible say? And how should the Bible be applied and understood for the contemporary context? A second source is tradition. There's not one tradition of Christianity. There's many traditions. But what do each of the traditions have to say about these issues? And how flexible or adaptable might those traditions be? The final source is human reason. What does the best of human thinking say about these issues? And how can Christianity, Christians and Christianity and Christian theologians absorb and appropriate the best of human thinking? It's, it, it's my contention in the book that there are basically three main ways that Christians respond to these cultural issues. One way is a more reinterpretive way, taking the cultural issue as seriously as possible and, if need be, transforming Christian ideas as much as possible to fit the cultural situation. Another way is a more repristinating way. It suggests that Christianity needs to maintain its identity as it has been over time, not change, but speak to the culture, maintain its own integrity as it has been vis-a-vis -vis the culture. And then there's a host of positions, accommodating positions in between, that tend to suggest we need to take the cultural insight seriously, cultural changes seriously, but also be faithful and true to the tradition and the biblical witness. And part of the task of my book, and certainly the task of my classes, is to help students understand these range of positions and where Christianity and different versions of Christianity might be headed in the future.